Welcome to the Shepherd's Pie, a slice of hope to raise faithful kids, where we focus on topics that impact young people today. I'm Antony Barone Kolenk. I'm a father of five who served in the Air Force for 21 years. I'm now a law professor and a columnist for Practical Homeschooling Magazine. I'm also the author of The Harwood Mysteries, an inspirational medieval fiction series for kids aged 10 and up. Here on The Shepherd's Pod, we want to inform, inspire, and to help you raise happy, healthy, faithful kids, whether you're a parent, a teacher, a pastor, anyone. In today's episode, we'll be looking at how fiction and faith can help address anxiety in young people today and provide them good role models to cope with that anxiety. My guest is Amanda Cleary Estep, an editor at Moody Publishers and author of the Tree Street Kids fiction series, in which one of the main characters has to deal with several anxiety issues. In the entertainment review segment of the show, my guest reviewer Carrie Schmidt will be discussing Escape from the Everglades by Tim Shoemaker, in which another teen character has to handle some very anxious situations with alligators. You know, kids today are dealing with anxiety in ways that I don't recall ever having to handle when I was growing up in the 1980s. More and more, we see kids receiving therapy and medication, being diagnosed with anxiety disorders. I've seen it in my own family and among children, teens, and adults. How can faith help young people today cope with their anxiety, understand their anxiety, deal with their anxiety? My guest today, Amanda Cleary Estep, will discuss her fiction series for youth, The Tree Street Kids, where one of her main characters does have to grapple with anxiety issues. And today we'll get a bonus because my guest reviewer is Carrie Schmidt, who will be discussing Tim Shoemaker's novel, Escape from the Everglades, where another main character has to deal with several anxiety-inducing issues. And both of these novels model some great faith-based ways for our teens and tweens to handle the anxiety in their lives today. Today I am with Amanda Cleary Estep. She's a senior developmental editor at Moody Publishers in Chicago, but she is also the author of the Tree Street Kids Middle Grade series by Moody. She also wrote a devotional for young people called Life Lessons for Anxious Kids. Her other children's writing includes works in Ladybug, The Friend, Sunday School Curriculum, and she also leads writing workshops at her local teen center. Amanda, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Tony. Really happy to be here. So you have a fascinating background. You really have hit a lot of different areas here between being an editor at Moody, doing uh, kids writing, and also I didn't even talk about some of the other nonfiction writing you've done for like Christianity Today. Can you just tell us a little bit about your background and how you got so involved in writing and publishing? It's one of those things where I, you know, ever since I was a child, I wanted to write books. I loved to read. I was a bookworm. That just led into going to school for writing, um, having all kinds of different, you know, writing jobs. I was in journalism and I taught writing at the college level. One thing led to another and I've, I've never stopped loving children's books. And so I started to dabble in that a little bit when my kids were little. And a few years ago, I had to ask myself, you know, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, Many years have passed since then, and I thought, you know what, I really want to go back to my children's writing, so that's what I did. Your editing at Moody is mostly for nonfiction adults, right? Correct. Uh, They do have some children's fiction that that I was able to uh, edit and uh, work on those projects, and then to be able to write my own series for Moody was just a real gift from God. All right, so let's talk about your Tree Street series. First of all, maybe just give us a little bit of background. What is the premise of the series? So in the Tree Street Kids series, which right now is a four book series, it's set in the 90s, it's middle grades, and it's really about ordinary kids, you know, nobody's got a wand, kind of contemporary setting, living everyday life, but they're having a little bit of not so ordinary adventures. So and kind of trying to figure out as they live their life, what does that mean? What does it mean to be a Christian as you're growing up? So the faith element of it is in there, and I want it to be a real natural part of who the characters are. 
Yeah, definitely. I, I'm interested that you said it in the 90s, because I've done some other writing on the side myself. <laughs> and I've set those things in the 90s, partly because it's a period of time that I you know, remember. Um, but I also did it because it was a period of time before there was all this crazy technology that was ruling our kids' lives. I'm wondering if that had anything to do with your setting. Yeah, that was definitely part of it. The publishing house had suggested it to me. And the really fun thing that's coming out of that is the eight to 12 year old, their parents grew up in the 90s for the most part. So the parents are really loving some of the elements of the books, you know, so it's a little bit nostalgic for them as well. Now, at the same time, you're making the series accessible, though, to kids in the 21st century. Right. Are you finding that the problems that your Tree Street kids are dealing with are similar enough to the ones that our kids are dealing with today? I think so. I mean, there's always those universal challenges, right? Trying to figure out where you fit in, making friends who are different than you are, acclimating to a new neighborhood or a new school or some kind of loss, or wondering what it means to trust God, to not be afraid when, you know, the Bible says, oh, don't be afraid. Well, what does that look like uh, for a 10-year-old? Absolutely. Yeah. And I, and I agree. I think the universal themes, the coming of age themes even. And like you said, I, I thought it was funny. You said, you know, you want to think about what you want to do when you grow up, because at 52, I still ask myself those same questions. So if mm -hmm. we're asking ourselves those questions, you know that teenagers are still asking themselves that question, too. Uh, all right. I wanted to talk about the faith aspect that you mentioned. Not every kid's book nowadays, even if it's put out by a Christian publisher, necessarily wants to put faith front and center. Um, maybe they're trying to reach a more mainstream audience. But I definitely noticed that you, you, know, you have Bible verses, there's mention of Jesus and God. How were you able to work those themes in, in a way that you felt would be receptive to young people today? Yeah, I get asked that question a lot, especially by authors. And one of the ways I decided to describe it is there's this really surprising and wonderful melding of faith and fiction writing. And I really looked at the way I did it or tried to do it was in a way that was authentic to the characters. So Jack Finch, who's the main character, is the kid who I, I really kind of based on my son. And if you've raised kids, you kind of, you know, you watch them, you, you teach them your faith, but everybody's so individual and in how they grow in their faith. And so I wanted those things to be authentic to the kids. So Jack, you know, he's the kid that's, I know what my parents believe. I'm trying to figure it out. I believe it too, but what does that look like in my daily life? You know, his best friend, Allison, is he's the kid that's always in church. He he knows Bible verses. Jack memorized Jesus wept. You know? But Ellison, you know, is just like popping them out like crazy, you know. And so Jack and Ellison come from a more Protestant background, Ruthie's Catholic background. And then Roger is his family doesn't go to church. So it's been really interesting for him as a character to kind of look at his really good friends and say, well, what does this mean? I really just kind of looked at how my how I and my own children grew up with faith and what that looked like in their lives. Yeah, well, it's interesting. And this is an ecumenical show, but it is interesting that you're, you're hitting all the different areas there, even in what you mentioned with your characters. And I noticed going through the book that definitely the way you present it is, is in a way that would be acceptable to any denomination. For kids that age, just even getting them to you know learn about God in general is a heavy enough lift. Um, and I thought you did it in a very delicate way, but yet more out there than perhaps in, in some of the other middle grade books that are, are on the market. You know, I've talked to different Christian authors and, and uh, children's authors, and there's this feeling that we were so afraid of preaching that we kind of go the opposite direction and we make goodness God. We put goodness on the throne. If it is, it's only because God's on the throne. And as far as talking about you know, different religions, to me, it's always that Christ is at the center and that's what the message has to be. And goodness is a wonderful thing, but it really is about presenting the reason for our hope to children and sharing that with them because it's a beautiful and needed thing and we can dance around it all we want, but that's not what we're really called to do. Yeah. So the trick is finding the way to make it organic. You know, my, my books in the middle ages, you know, it's easy to make it organic if it takes place at a monastery. You know, <laughs> you know every, everybody's <laughs> right. talking about everything. You've got, right. you know, kids, you know, in, in the 1990s, you know, it may be a little less easy to, to pull that off, but I thought that you were able to pull it off. The other interesting thing, was uh, this connection to anxiety. I noticed mm -hmm. that she wrote this devotional as sort of a spinoff to Jack 
versus the tornado, uh, helping kids just deal a little bit with anxiety. Could you t- tell us how that came about? The purpose of it. So it's a U version app Bible study for children. It's it's just five days. Um, we connected it to Jack versus the tornado which is the first book in the series. And that book really has a lot to do with themes of moving and change and uncertainty and even fear. And, you know, who's trustworthy when I'm afraid? So the life lessons for anxious kids, even though it's based on Jack versus a tornado, um, this, each of the little little fictional vignettes kind of deal with different things that might make a child anxious. So that might be how do I make a new friend? Or, oh, I'm moving. So each of those five devotionals has a theme. Nowadays, you want to talk about being current. Kids dealing with anxiety today seems a lot more than when I was growing up. I and mean, I'm sure the anxiety was there, but we're so much more aware of it today. Did you find when you were writing Jack versus the Tornado that you found that Jack was you know, experiencing different scenarios that were making him anxious? Oh, for sure. The book starts off with Jack having to move from his grandparents' farmhouse where he's lived with his parents all his life. And not only are they moving to a different house, they're moving from the farm to the suburbs. He doesn't know anything about the Chicago suburbs. So there's that's one of the most stressful things we know for anybody is to move. I remember my own fears that were stirred up when I was a kid having to move uh, to a new town and those kind of things. And my children are in their mid-20s to early 30s, so they grew up in the 90s. The level of anxiety is startling. You know, I've had different conversations with people about, well, what may have been the cause for this? Is it, (laughs) did we raise them in a certain way that, that caused anxiety? Is it this constant influx of, you know, media? No, I, I agree, because it does seem like kids are getting a lot more anxious. I mean, is that part of the mission of writing some of these children's books to help younger kids be able to process that anxiety? And, and if so, how can these books help them? Books are a wonderful way, and fiction is a wonderful way, story is a wonderful way for anybody really to, to learn, to have a situation relate to their lives. You know, with these books, so the first one is, um, you know, we have this this idea of anxiety. Um, the second book, which is The Hunt for Fang, has this idea of stewardship of God's earth. And then books three and four, you know, we'll be following some some themes like that, too. So what are some tips that if you're a parent and you have a child with anxiety and you're and you're hoping, hey, maybe a devotional like this or a fiction novel like this, where the kids basically are going through some of these situations, are there any tips that you would have for parents who are dealing with kids with anxiety? I think, you know, what I've done with my own kids is I encourage conversation and certainly prayer. Um, and the prayers don't have to be complicated. Something that even in uh, Jack versus a tornado, there's this kind of this recurring uh, use of a verse. And I think if kids have a verse that they can just cling to and just almost repeat it, they don't have to memorize they, you know, a whole chapter of scripture. It's just give them a, a simple verse to kind of meditate on. And I know you do do that in the books. What are some of the, your favorite verses that you think kids really can benefit from? Besides Jesus wept, which apparently is, uh, is, is Jack the one who, that's his right, big memorization. Right. Jack's all about keep it simple. But the verse I have that I concentrate on in Jack versus a tornado is uh, Psalm 118, 6, the Lord is with me, I will not be afraid. And I think even to say the Lord is with me is just, those words are just so packed. And that's, I think, a lot of times what causes anxiety is we're looking at things that aren't true. The the circumstances might be true, but a big lie that we often believe as human beings is that God isn't with us, that God is not present with us, that he doesn't care. That's not true. And so to speak the truth of scripture is is a great weapon against that battle. I totally agree. I think one of the things that I really don't like about uh, how modern culture has tried to entirely divorce faith from any of our kids' lives as though it doesn't exist at all. And you read these books and you're like, well, yeah, I get it. You don't want to focus. This isn't a Christian book or it's not a religious book, but kids, they have families that go to church and kids think about God and they ask questions. And, you know, even just at that basic level, when we totally pretend like God, faith, spirituality is nothing 
nothing to do with our lives or our kids' lives in our fiction when we see that. To me, it's not telling the truth. And that, that was one of my big reasons for writing the Harwood Mysteries, too, was to show that I don't want you to divorce faith out of your life. Of course, in the Middle Ages, maybe it seems more natural that they wouldn't have divorced faith out of their lives, but it's no more natural in Chicago in the 1990s, I don't think either. And I mean, do you find that your kids in the Tree Street Kids series are, are grappling with that kind of problem too? Yeah, that's a common struggle that we have. And one of one of the things I haven't tackled yet is somebody challenging one of the kids about their faith. And that's something that, that really happens, especially to kids once they move into high school and college. Right. If anything, nowadays, the, the temptation isn't to challenge the kid's faith. It's just to pretend like there is no such thing. And that's, uh, and, and when you go back to it, the anxiety issue, I think you're right. If you are pretending like these things don't exist, but it's not true, and the kids know from their, their life experience that that's not true, to me, that does create anxiety because now you're presenting them with something that is not true. And so I like how your Tree Street kids are you know, clinging to a verse that might help them get through the day. Moving into your your workshops with teens, I noticed you give writing workshops to teens. Do these types of topics ever come up when you're talking with teens about uh, their writing as far as either you know faith or even dealing with the kinds of anxiety or problems that they might have in their lives? Yeah, not too much. I volunteered at our local teen center. Those subjects didn't come up too much. Actually, a, a common theme seemed to be zombies. Talk about anxiety inducing. Uh, they are very, they are very, very popular now. There's a teen zombie musical from Australia. It's actually pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Uh, all right. So getting close to uh, tying, tying things up. I wanted to tie up a few extra questions as we head to the end. Um, one of them might be how fiction can help kids in the middle grade, even and maybe just elaborating on that a little bit more. And, and how are you trying to do that with the Tree Street kids in particular? Kate Chesterton years ago wrote about an eternal education is one where an authority sends something down and they need to be sure enough of what they're saying that they would dare tell it to a child. Those words really struck me. So I started to say, do I dare write this? Do I dare uh, share this with a child? Because I have somebody who's going to hold me accountable <laughs> uh, to what I'm telling a child. So that's why when he said you should be sure enough about what you're saying that you dare tell it to a child, the sure enough needs to be based on the truth of God's word. That's great. And I love that you brought in G.K. Uh, Chesterton on that also. Um, all right. If parents want to get a hold of the Tree Street Kids series, what are your preferred ways for them to get a hold of them? The easiest way to find out more about the series is just to go to treestreetkids.com. And they can find out more about each of the books. They can find out where to buy the books and then a little bit more about me as well. And as far as the devotional, is that uh, like a free add-on or do they, do they pay for that separately or how does that work? The devotional is the, it's just part of the app. So you use that app and look for life lessons for anxious kids and it, it should come right up. Wonderful. All right. Uh, any parting thoughts for our, our listeners? One of the things that I think is so important for parents these days, because books have changed, children's books have changed a lot, and what messages are being sent, the topics that are being broached, and I'm not saying typical topics shouldn't, you know, presented in fiction, but I think it's more than ever for parents to find their authors or publishers that they trust, and not so much censoring kids' books, but, you know, kind of this idea of curating what your children are reading, because parents don't have time to read everything that their children are reading, they don't even know everything our children are reading. Definitely. And I think you know, those of us who are in the business of writing for kids, I think that's what we're trying to do is give them a lot more options out there to have quality fiction that they would enjoy that's written at their level, but is also something that their parents would feel very comfortable with them reading and not have to worry about anything. And I noticed when Absolutely. you uh, when you talk about your True Street Kids and uh, on your website, you talk about it. If you were doing this as a movie, that they would be G-rated. And I think for that age group, um, not only is that important, but that's also probably unusual nowadays, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, with our middle grade fiction. Uh, all right. Well, hey, Amanda, it's been great having you on the show today. I appreciate your time. And I will definitely be putting links to uh, your Tree Street Kids on the website when this broadcasts and uh, enjoyed speaking with you today. Uh, well, it was great fun, Tony, and I really appreciate the opportunity so much.
My guest reviewer today is Carrie Schmidt, the founder of the book-focused blog, readingismysuperpower.org. She's also the co-founder of the Christian Fiction Readers Retreat and Just Read Publicity Tours. She's an avid reader and a book reviewer who lives in Georgia with her husband, Eric. She's been my guest on the show before, and I've asked her to come back today as a guest reviewer. Carrie, welcome back to The Shepherd's Pie. Hi, Tony. Thank you so much for having me back. It's a privilege. Well, it's so great to have you here. So earlier, I was speaking with Amanda Cleary Estep about her Tree Street Kids series, which actually was one of the series you had recommended last time. Yeah, I love and, those books. Yeah. And so what is the book that you're bringing to us today? So today I'm looking at Escape from the Everglades by Tim Shoemaker. It's his newest book. The main characters are 13 to 14. So the premise is this young boy, his name is Parker, and his father is a wildlife agent, and he works in the Everglades. That's where he's stationed, along with a close family friend and their family. And they have a young girl, about 13 years old. Her name is Angelica, and she goes by Jelly. And it starts out actually very intensely with an alligator attack. And then that kind of precipitates the rest of the story where Parker uh, is dealing with a lot of anxiety and he really has to struggle with going back into the Everglades and and how his friends help him, but more importantly, how his faith helps him and what he learns about God and about himself through the journey. So does Tim Shoemaker really, you know, make that anxiety theme part of really what the story is about? Yes, because not only does Parker suffer with it, but Jelly does as well. And hers kind of manifests in different ways. But as Parker begins to get over his anxieties and work through his anxieties, Jelly becomes even more anxious in trying to protect him and keep him out of the Everglades. It's very much a, a theme of the entire, the entire story. So for parents or teachers or anybody thinking about buying this book, how does the story translate to a young reader to help them kind of work through some of the anxiety that uh, our kids today are going through? For starters, it helps them know they're not alone. From third grade until my 30s, I struggled with severe crippling anxiety. And so if I had had fiction back then that I could read and realize, hey, somebody else feels this way, I'm not abnormal, so to speak. I might have been more open about it and saved myself a lot of agony. I think also just the reminder that God is with you, realizing you're not alone, realizing you need to be open with somebody, that you're struggling with anxiety instead of keeping it all in and trying to fix it yourself, which which usually just makes it worse. Yeah, definitely. This is tracking very well with what I spoke with with Amanda. Also, Mm -hmm. Faith was part of the solution to the anxiety for her characters, too. Although there was Bible verses that kids could really cling to to help them through this. Uh, Mm -hmm. Does Tim Shoemaker take a similar approach with Faith to really, you know, have kids focusing on, on a scriptural passage or anything like that? Um, He does that a little bit, mostly with his characters is prayer, keeping that open line of communication going with God and just really talking to him. And one of the scripture verses that he uses is talking about a person of integrity walking uprightly. And at first, that doesn't really seem to fit with the whole anxiety theme, but it ends up all tying together at the end really well. But there's a lot of conversations, particularly with Parker and God, you know, where he where he talks to Jesus. He says, Jesus, I know that your word says you'll never leave me, but I'm feeling really alone right now. And just really clinging to God and that relationship that he already has with God as he's working through his anxieties. And you can see the opposite of that with Jelly and how she's responding. Interesting. Uh, It sounds like Parker is a very religious teen, uh, whereas Jelly is not. And so you see a contrast with how they can handle anxiety. And they both They both have the faith background, but Parker has much more of an active relationship with God. And Jelly has more of a, what we would call kind of a token relationship at this point. And so you can definitely see that contrast of how Parker's handling it, where he gives it to God and where Jelly's handling it, where she takes it on herself and tries to fix everything. Now, do you think we talked about in Amanda's book, she was able to sort of weave in the faith aspect, but in her mm-hmm. books, it seems like a very gentle touch. Uh, is Tim Shoemaker's book a lot more direct? Uh, in places it is. Yeah. But again, similar to Amanda's books, it's a natural part of the character's lives. So it doesn't really come out as being preachy. It's just, this is who this character is. And this is what they're working through. And by nature of their relationship with God and how important their faith is to them, this is how it's going to look in their lives. 
All right. And it sounds like you really enjoyed this book. What, what is it, if you were just going to say, hey, these were the two or three things I really loved about this book. What is it really loved about it? Well, the writing is top notch. She Maker really pulls you into the story right away. It helps you care about the characters and their outcomes. The other thing I liked about it is it dealt with real life things that kids that age are facing, but it, it underscored it with hope and with the knowledge that nobody's too far messed up or too far in bondage to a sin or to a mental illness or anything else that they can't be redeemed. And, but very subtly that, that message is in there subtly. It's not, you know, full force. And I just, I, I thought it was a great suspense novel. I mean, it, it, you know, it really, really latches onto you and works that anxiety theme in and, and the implications of it naturally. Are there any cautionary you know, warnings you'd put out for, uh, for parents who are thinking of buying this for you know, middle schooler or yeah. even an eighth, eighth grade or something like that? Some of the details get a little gory. You know, when you're working with alligators and alligator attacks, it, it can get a little graphic. I was like, hmm, I don't know about some of this <laughs> for my own squeamish self. Uh, but I kept reading. It didn't stop me from reading it. And then there is a subplot involving a character in an abusive relationship, a teenager, older teenager that's in an abusive relationship. And so some of that may, parents may want to be aware of that before they start reading, just to make sure it's, it's nothing graphic. It's nothing, you know, but something that, you know, kids are dealing with and need to be addressed in faith-filled fiction, I think. Great. And if listeners want to see some of your book reviews and some of the other books that you highlight, uh, where should they go? They can go to readingismysuperpower.org. Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. I definitely hope to have you back to talk about some other books in the future. I'd be honored. Thanks. That's all the time we have for the show today. We spoke about anxiety and faith with author and editor Amanda Cleary Estep, author of the Tree Street Kids fiction series by Moody Publishers. And in the entertainment review segment of the show, my guest reviewer Carrie Schmidt discussed Tim Shoemaker's novel for teens, Escape from the Everglades. Again, this is Anthony Barone Colank, and this has been The Shepherd's Pie. If any of you listening today have a question for me or a topic you'd like to have us cover on the show, please drop me a line on my website at antonycolank.com. That's A-N-T-O-N-Y-K-O-L-E-N-C.com. Also, if you visit my website, you can learn more about my historical fiction series for kids, The Harwood Mysteries. I'll end, as always, with my wife's favorite scripture quote from Romans 8, 28. We know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. May the Lord bless and keep you this week.